From virtual to real, Nissan presents GT Academy Race to Dubai. Over the next few months, a selection of Nissan's youngest racing drivers will be training for one of the world's toughest endurance races, the Dubai 24 Hours. We'll follow their highs and their lows as they attempt to make the grade in the world of professional motorsport. But unlike your average racing driver, there's one thing that makes these guys unique. They've all learned their craft on a PlayStation. This is the race to Dubai. Since 2008, GT Academy has been turning PlayStation gamers into racing drivers. And the program has already produced three professional racing drivers. 2008 winner, Lucas Ordonez. Yes, the 2010 winner, Jordan Tresson. And in 2011, Jan Mardenburg. Well, in 2012, three more names were added to the list of winners. European GT Academy winner, Wolfgang Greip is one. Now that I reach a little part of my dream, I just want to keep pushing and achieve bigger goals and bigger dreams. Russian GT Academy winner, Mark Schultz. For me, it's one chance, only this chance, and I want to take it. And German GT Academy winner, Experience with GT Academy was very fantastic. For me, it's like uh, they put me out of my normal life and throw me into a dream. Well, since winning GT Academy, Wolfgang, Mark, and Peter have been subjected to a rigorous training program that balances fitness, psychological training, and driving. All these elements combined will help them reach their ultimate goal of racing in the Dubai 24 hours. Well, to race in Dubai, they need an international sea license. And over the past two months, the boys have been racing all over the UK, trying to obtain the 12 signatures needed to get that license. So far, they have nine signatures each. And this weekend, if they finish, they get two more. Well, this race at Donington Park is the first time that the 2012 winners race the GT4 car, specially built for them to race in the 24 hours of Dubai. This is their first time racing these cars, the, the actual cars that they will race in Dubai. It's a very nice car, and the boys of the team have it, uh, done very well in a short time, so good done. About five weeks to do the chassis, roll cage, uh, the lightweight in seam well, and etc. And then I believe it's taken about six weeks to, to put it together. It's, it's quite fiddly. Uh, these cars are bespoke, and not, not all the components are bought off the shelf, so we have to do most of the fabrication in house. And, you do get a little bit possessive over it, and uh, to hand it over after you've loved it for, you know, 10 weeks is quite difficult. The engineers hope the boys will bring the car back in one piece. They head out for qualifying. Well, despite two cars colliding in front of Wolfgang and Mark, both drivers avoid this, and Wolfgang manages to cross the line in fourth position. Hugely nerve-wracking watching from the grandstand. I mean, Wolfie was nearly taken out on the first corner. There was a crash ahead. He did a great job avoiding that. He was just making some great overtaking manoeuvres. Massively consistent lap times looking at the telemetry here. And that's what did it, you know. You can't ask for anything more than quick, consistent laps. And no pressure, but no, no, no I want a trophy. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Good man. Well, Mark was driving well in the strong eighth position when, unfortunately, a problem. I have some problem with my rear wheels, and I need to go to pit in the race. And I lost one lap, but but uh, I'm finished. It's OK. Two weeks ago in uh, Anglesey, we had a word with Mark about his attitude and his whole approach to, to GT Academy. And, and since then, we've seen a, a great improvement. And he was very mature in his approach to that qualifying session. When there was cars around him, he backed off, found some clear space on track, and that's what allowed him to maybe move further up the grid and closer to Wolfie's times. 
for this weekend. Peter will be competing in a different race to Wolfgang and Mark. He also qualified well. It was uh, okay qualifying. The laps were okay, but I have a problem at the uh, last two laps, I think. We have a problem with the throttle. So, Rob is happy with the change in race performance and the change in attitude off the track. Let's hear from the drivers. It's really, I must say, really perfect balance and drives very well. Not too much over or understeer. Brakes are good. Nothing was wrong with the car, which for a first ever test is good. And I'm very happy about that. And normally, you'd build a new car and you'd go and take, take it and do a shakedown with an experienced driver that knows the car, knows how it should feel. So to go out and have the small problem that we had this morning, we're, we're quite happy with. They seem to be much happier in these cars. It's more racy, and that's what they ultimately want to do. They want to race fast cars, and, and they're more infused by the cars. So great attitude change, and it's going to go from strength to strength. I think the guys will have a great race. They're going to be right in the middle of the pack. Uh, and I think they can move forward in the race. Uh, and tomorrow, I'm targeting the podium. They do have to gain their signatures. We've said it a million times to the guys, but I want them to push on now and, and get, get on that podium. The podium was really close, but it's for tomorrow, because tomorrow I start fourth, so. Everything's completely on track. Yeah, I'm, I'm completely happy. But in, in motor racing, as you know, it can change in an instant. Oh, Wolfgang, Mark and Peter are working hard to excel in the training and on the track with the help of their mentors, Christian Van and Rob Jenkinson. Now they work tirelessly and get them ready for the Dubai 24 hours. Motorsport is not just about the driver, let's not forget. Success needs a dedicated team. And all the GT Academy graduates are very lucky to have RJ and Motorsport as their partners. Motorsport's always been my passion, even when I was at school. I was a driver. I actually drove for quite a long time, 1967 to 1980. After racing, Bob became team manager, and in 1999, he and wife Liz started RJN. Well, my role in RJN Motorsport is varied. I'm HR manager, uh, I'm the managing director, and then Liz, my wife, she does all the admin. There are um, eight mechanics who, some, some are freelance, come when we're really busy, but they seem to be with us all the time. I enjoy it because it's variety. I can mechanic, I can engineer the car, talk to the drivers, I drive the truck to the circuits, and so we, um, we just get on with what needs to do. You can have your late nights, you can have your heartaches, but then when you get to the end of it, and you get a good result, winning championships and things like that, it really does make you feel as though you've achieved your job. People don't know about motorsport, it, it, it is a package. And it's the same whether it's the racing we do, which is GT racing, or whether it's Formula One. A team of guys, engineers, mechanics, management, bring the car to the circuit, put the driver in it, and try and go faster than the guy in the garage next door. Uh, yeah, I, th I think any mechanic that, you know, doesn't get pre-race nerves and the excitement and the buzz, they're lying. <laughs> your driver, you have to make him comfortable within the team. It's his job to get to know the mechanics really well, as they know that in the end, the mechanics will respond to a friendly sort of driver. But how are the new boys settling in? It's hard for them because they parachute in just having won the game. And from there, they've got to somehow see where they fit. And it's not easy for them, but they're doing well. The 2012 GT Academy winners are at Donington Park, racing for the next two signatures towards their international license. They're also driving the GT4, designed to race the Dubai 24 hours. Wolfgang had a successful first run in the car, finishing fourth. Today, he and driving mentor Rob Jenkinson want a podium finish. Wolfgang had a small technical problem similar to the one we had before. We've got some electrical issue on the fuel system. Fortunately, uh, we have had a, a mechanic failure, uh, pressure fuel problem. 
My start was good. I was fourth in the first corner. I was chasing uh, the tree first, and then after only a couple of corners, no, no power under the throttle, nothing, and my car just stopped. Yeah, of course, this is motor racing. It's never. Not a good feeling. I think a podium was definitely on the cards. That was the objective that I set at the start of the weekend. Wolf is hugely dis disappointed, but these are mechanical devices, they can go wrong. Well, Mark was doing well until called into the pits and a rear wheel problem. And that means he starts the race in 11th position. Several collisions early in the race meant that the safety car also became a major feature. And whilst the marshals were waving their yellow flags, Mark suffered another blow. To do all the training, obviously, the, the, the tuition and driver coaches have on board every time camera. So the onboard shows that he was slowing down nicely under the yellow flags, as he should, following the guy in front. And someone came barreling past, thinking they were still racing, and drove into the side of him. Not good race today, but I have signature. It's not my fault. We can see on the video footage that the safety car boards and the yellow flags were being displayed for the three corners previous. Mark was way off the gas. He was coasting uh, and just got hit and taken out, really. So a lot of damage to the car. Uh, but absolutely no fault on Mark's part on this one. He was doing everything right, and it was a bit of a shame, really, because it ruined his race, or well, the race, such as the race was, the race was ruined only by, by the safety car, but it ruined his race, uh, but it's all part of racing. Peter Vachero was competing in a different race to Wolfgang and Mark and had better luck, despite, though, their own troubles. His teammates, they were happy for him. Yeah, I'm second in class in this race. Very good result for me. Yeah, I have some problems with fuel, but it don't stop me to be second in class. Very good race for me. What about your races, Mark? Uh, what about Today. Races? Today. Today. Good races. Some problems. Second in class or? No. no. Okay. <laughs> Only you. You. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. I know, Peter. Yeah. You're yeah. faster since this. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think the boys have transferred from the free race cars to the Group M cars and now find into the GT4 cars with remarkable ease, actually. You know, they're not intimidated by the extra power that they have, the extra speed that the cars produce. And that's only testament to the fact that they've got a lot of simulator training. It does you know, a lot of good for these guys. They're starting off at a much higher level. Um, and the, the change has been seamless, really. The driving so far, it's so far so good. These are harder cars to drive, more G-force, more high-speed thinking to do. So I'm just thinking about their fitness levels. I'm not so sure about that. I noticed it in one of the earlier races. Uh, Peter looked a bit tired when he got out. So I'm just keeping an eye on that, but and I shall be talking to their mentor driver coaches about that. So the transition to GT Force has gone well. Despite no podium, both Wolfgang and Mark leave Donington with another two signatures, just one more, and they gain their international seat license. Next time on Race to Dubai, the first GT Academy graduate, Lucas Ordinez, races in an innovative new car, the Delta Wing at Petit Le Mans at Road Atlanta. And Wolfgang, Mark and Peter are put through their paces in a gruelling session at Silverstone. From virtual to real, Nissan presents GT Academy Race to Dubai.